vortex. So I was just thinking about how people that don't believe in God are really shit out of luck. You know? And that makes me so sad for them. Because if they don't believe in God, what are they going to believe in place of God? Because that part of them that denies God is still going to require something to fill that void. And that's what's so silly about these people that identify as, you know, secular or whatever. They just have no idea what they're missing. And so, you know, we were talking about death tonight. I've always been obsessed with death. Like, I've never not been obsessed with death. So, I feel like people like me, the reason why we're such a threat to society is because we don't fear death. Because it's something that we're very well aware of. And this whole idea of like, you're going to die if you don't wear a mask. Or you're going to die if you don't turn yourself into a guinea pig for the pharmaceutical companies. Or you're going to die if you don't do exactly what we tell you to do when we tell you to do it. You know those people. Those people aren't the problem. The problem are the people that believe them. And I love my parents, but you know, they're they're victim of that mindset. And so anything terrible that this government does, anything terrible that doctors do, anything terrible that scientists do they'll rationalize it with, oh, well, they had to do that. They had to lock us down. They didn't lock everybody down, honey. They didn't lock Amazon down, okay? They didn't lock Walmart down. So, what's interesting is how many excuses people will make for bad people doing bad things out of either fear of looking politically incorrect or fear of death. I mean, if you had any idea how many arguments I get into with people because I don't have FOMO, okay? So... I'm like public enemy number one because I'm the only American that does not have FOMO. So that's why they push social media on people because they want them to have FOMO. They want them to think that they're not important unless people know about them. That burrito just doesn't taste the same without 500 likes, does it? It's just not the same unless a bunch of candy asses know about it because let's face it, the majority of people on the internet are candy asses. The real people don't want to be on some cyber sphere all the time, man. But that brings me back to my original question from earlier, what is actually real? So I'm sitting in a parking lot of a grocery store, corporate conglomerates. Is this real? Is that shopping cart real? Is this automobile real? Is it real because I can touch it, hold it, jiggle it? I'm always having like existential conversations with myself, okay? And 
And I think it's okay that that people like ask questions that are offensive to religious people. That's fine. Offend religious people all day, dude. Because if they can't answer those questions, then they don't really have the faith that they pretend to have. And by answering those questions, I mean sometimes the best answer is, I don't know, okay? And I think that that's the issue, is that people just want to claim to know things. And all these people that claim to know things trust the CDC, okay? So I got into this argument with my dad like about a year ago about that ever so reliable jabby jab, okay? And I said, remember when they were saying it had a 95% efficacy? Remember when they said that? He didn't remember them saying that. But they said that. We've been clocking all this shit, okay? We've been clocking all of it. The reason why people don't care, and my dad's not one of these people that's on his phone. He doesn't even have a smartphone, okay? But most people do. Most people have a smartphone, and so their memory is evaporating. So easily, so quickly, they go to sleep and forget that the previous day even happened. So, it's all because of that fear of missing out. They don't think that they're going to be part of things. They don't think that they're going to be able to get from point A to point B. I mean, I get that it makes everything easier and more convenient, but, like, I don't know. I really am, like, one of the few people that purposely makes everything difficult so that I cannot be American, maybe. <laughs> well, I don't think that that's true, though, always. Like, I feel like, you know, like, Appalachians have proved, like, they're the heart of America. That's why the weather machine's, like, gone to work on them because... They don't want people to know that they can, like, live in this, like, separate sect of society, you know? Like, you can create the world that you want to live in. And that's why, like, that group of people is so stigmatized and belittled. And they call those people pillbillies. Who invented the pills, though? I don't think they're inventing them themselves, you know? I mean, maybe they are. I don't know. From what I've heard, they're addicted to Oxycontin real bad. But a lot of these poverty-stricken communities, like the government wants to push all this help on them. They didn't even ask for it. They don't even want. And it just completely destroys the community. But Unfortunately, a lot of people have completely misinterpreted the movie They Live because the movie They Live is way more about what's going on with social status, okay? So, different classes of society here in America and, and the way that they regard each other. So basically, that movie is all about how the middle class sucks and how they're not paying attention to anything that's happening in their country because they're too busy watching TV and being completely brainwashed by all the stuff on the TV and the advertisements and all that. I feel like most people miss that specific point. They want to talk about how, oh, the advertisements are lying to us. Notice that one of them was procreate, okay? So, so many people have just popped out kids and they're not even taking care of them. Now, I'm not in favor of abortion, but I'm sure that pro-lifers are going to twist my words to make it seem like I am. If you're in favor of people just popping out kids without taking care of them, you're even worse than an abortionist, okay? Most of these parents give their kids a tablet, okay? They give their little two-year-old a tablet so that they don't have to be a parent. So, no. No, don't tell me that abortion is so evil when parents are allowed to abuse their kids. They just don't call it child abuse, okay? And until you're willing to talk about the foster care system and until you're willing to have these interactions with kids that have been raped so many times they've lost count, 
you don't get to talk about how you're pro-life. I don't give a fuck. I'm an illegitimate child and I approve this message, okay? So anyway, most illegitimate children, you'd be surprised that we're not all like these pro-life gurus. It seems like the most pro-life people or the ones that are the most vocal about it rather are people that don't adopt, they don't foster, they have no idea how bad this government is and how much this government is screwing over poor kids, okay? Mainly poor white kids. They've ruined the black community with Section 8, WIC, crack. They ruined white people through fucking pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals, child protective services. DHS does not help white people. DHS helps immigrants. That's it. And they know exactly what they're doing. They know that a lot of these people are susceptible to addiction. That's why they put a liquor store right up the street from a poverty-stricken area. Liquor store, and right next to it is the DTO, okay? Discount tobacco outlet, for those of you who don't hang out with poor people, okay? So there's a liquor store and a discount tobacco outlet. And then a Boost Mobile. Or, what do you call it? Advanced Financial. Advanced Financial. Okay? So, because we have freedom and liberty, they have to go out of their way to enslave people. And unfortunately, most people choose slavery. Just look at how many people are on their phones. You can't tell me that that's not slavery, and you cannot tell me that's not possession. These people choose to be possessed. They just can't wait to be a host body for some demonic spirit. I mean, really and truly. <sighs> anyway. It's just one of the reasons why I've kind of like... slowed down on like my pot intake and all that because like I don't want to be a slave to cannabis have y'all heard of kratom kratom is, is opium that's legal I guess and it can be very very beneficial okay I take it sometimes like if you take a small amount of opium like it, it's like essentially drinking a cup of coffee because it's in the coffee family but it's also really good for pain because it's fucking opium okay now I, I do this when you know I'm experiencing menstrual cramps or something like that because I really don't like to, to take anything or rely on anything but it's one of those things where like if I'm going to take anything it's going to be natural or at least as natural as it can be right not a pharmaceutical okay I would rather take kratom than take fucking ibuprofen but the problem with taking kratom though is that like you know you depend upon it and then your tolerance goes up so that's why it's better especially with any natural drug like you can still abuse it and if you abuse it it's not going to have the same medicinal properties that it originally did I realize that with weed but, you know, I'm totally in favor of, of people using plants to help them with whatever um, physical or psychological problems they have. But, you know, if you get to a point where you're depending on it in order to function, it's not good anymore. You know? Like, I have several friends of mine that are total potheads. And I used to be this way too, you know? wake and bake all fucking day okay like <laughs> we always treat every single hour like we just woke up all right and we continue to roll more joints we continue to pack more bowls we continue to purposely hang around people that are willing to share okay <laughs> so trust me I know all about that life so I'm not judging people for that but I will say 
that these people that are relying so heavily on marijuana are abusing the plant. They're abusing it, they're idolizing it, and these people are really annoying. And they give marijuana a bad name. They typically don't rely on God, you know. It's one thing to like use a substance and appreciate it for what it is. It's another thing to devote your entire life to it, okay? And that's obviously gluttonous behavior. And I'm not in favor of people doing that so they don't do anything else. The solution isn't, let's just be on drugs, you know? I talk highly of drugs, get it, because of the spiritual stepladder that can be used in relation to them. I think that can they can be used for medicinal purposes. But if they're just recreational and you're using them so that you can forget that you exist, you should just kill yourself. You know, I'm not even joking, dude. I'm not even joking. Most people should kill themselves because they're already dead anyway, and they're gonna go to hell. So they might as well just up the ante, you know? If all you do is stare at a phone, yeah, yeah, suicide, why not, right? say this as I chug my coffee but I don't know it just seems like people don't want to be alive like they'll go out of their way to avoid being alive that's why they hate Jesus Christ so much because Jesus Christ was like the ultimate human he showed us what creation was supposed to be okay so that's why he is feared, okay, by demonic spirits that are possessing people because the demons want you dead. The demons want you to do things that are terrible for your well-being. That's why I call it hell being, okay? And a lot of these people are on psych meds, birth control, they're all addicted to their phones. I mean, who isn't addicted to their phone? There was a study in Johns Hopkins University. They said that the only way to not be addicted to your smartphone is to not have a smartphone. So, booyah, bitch. Booyah. So glad I never upgraded. And it's not just so I can sit on my high horse and gloat about how right I am about society. It's because, you know, society is so dependent on it for so many things. And that could not possibly be healthy. Okay. So this isn't about me being right. This is about me wanting what's best for society. And of course, society that's possessed is not going to want anything to do with that because they don't want to live. Okay? But I'm just grateful that I've chosen life. You remember that uh, movie Train Spotting? It's based off of this book by Irvine Welsh, and it's all about heroin addiction. And there's this whole like monologue by the main character, Renton, uh, played by Ewan McGregor. And he's just going on about, you know, all the different aspects of life that he doesn't like, which is why he chooses dope. <laughs> and what's really interesting about this movie, and I would highly recommend the book as well, what's really interesting about it is that it goes into why people choose drugs and not drugs to medicate, medicatable things, but you know, an escape. People choose drugs to escape, all right? Well, I think that this movie should be more talked about because I, I feel like you could easily apply his addiction to heroin to like society's addiction to technology society's addiction to media, society's addiction to um, the sense of personal importance that they have, all because they send a fucking tweet, all right? Um, <laughs> I chose not to choose that. I chose something else. <laughs> right? 
Well, it's like people think that if they don't have a phone, nothing that they do matters. They won't be able to accomplish anything unless they have the phone. Now, I understand somewhat for like communication and financial purposes, but all the other stuff, you don't fucking need it. You don't need it, you fucking druggie. That's what you are, you're a druggie. But, yeah. So a lot of people that choose like the escape Are they choosing the escape because they don't know what their purpose is? Or are they choosing the escape because they think they're like rebelling or something? They're being really transgressive by escaping reality. But what is reality? People probably think that about me because like I choose schizophrenia. <laughs> of course. Of course, it's so preferable to y'all's way of life, all right? I get to make art every day. If I didn't have schizophrenia, I'd make like 15 babies. Because that's what I'm supposed to do as a woman. But instead of making babies, I make, you know, thousands upon thousands of videos on YouTube that most people aren't even going to watch. And that might seem silly to like boring ass plebeian sheep that think that their level of importance is contingent on how many people pay attention to the stupid shit that comes out of their mouth. But to my 202 subscribers who eagerly await my videos, I'm sure, I'm sure you just can't wait. I just want to stay at 200. Like anytime I start to go above that, I just like freak out. But that's the thing, like I care about the few people that subscribe to me, you know? Like it means a lot more if you genuinely appreciate what I do versus, oh, you like what I said that one time and then you're so quick to drop me. You know, th that's the thing. I guess I value certain things more than most people. I value actual communication. I value actual sincerity. You know, like I'm a very, very sincere person. I know I change my mind a lot. This isn't just because I'm a woman. This is because, you know, I have a split mind. Technically, that's what schizophrenia stands for. I have a split mind. So because of that, I'm such a threat to the powers of be that want to convince me of one bullshit thing or another bullshit thing. Okay. You can't convince me of anything like I don't trust anybody left right center y'all full of shit okay y'all are doing the same thing every single one of you so how are you any different than the person that you think is your enemy you know they don't ask themselves these questions obviously if they did they wouldn't be in the place where they're at getting excited about being reinstated on Twitter Wow. Wow. But I thought Twitter sucked. I thought Twitter sucked, but now it doesn't suck. But then it's going to suck again until it doesn't suck. Right? Sorry. Just trying to keep up. Anyway. Choose life. Choose a career. Choose a family. No. You don't have to choose drugs. You can just choose not to have FOMO. And when you choose not to have FOMO, people that think that they have to choose life, a career, a family. Like, what is life? Does that mean a conventional thing? Because many people look at me like I'm losing, I'm failing, because I don't have all the stuff that I'm supposed to want as a woman, as a female American. The fact that I don't want it means that there's something obviously wrong with me. I'm crazy. I'm in a state of psychosis. I'm paranoid. That's why I don't have a smartphone. It's not because, you know, everything about it is terrible and it's turning society into a bunch of useless dunderheads. 
you know? That's not why. It's because I'm just crazy, you know? But that's crazy to not want what you have been trained to want. It's crazy to not want shit to do with that. To turn your back on that and to live a more primitive lifestyle. I would give anything to just go to fucking Uganda or some third world country and just put on face paint, blah, 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 you know, like I would love that. I would absolutely love that. People tell me I need to go to Europe. No, fuck that. Fuck that. I'm going to go to third world country. <laughs> if I ever leave America, I'm going to a third world country. Because they're a thousand times more spiritual than any second or, God forbid, a first world country. And it's not like I don't appreciate electricity and I don't appreciate my automobile and I don't appreciate my amazing restaurant job. Okay? I don't even say that facetiously. Like, I genuinely love my job. Mainly because of how much people like to spit on it. You know? Like, oh, you're a loser. You're a loser because you actually like your job. You're a loser because... You enable fat people to keep being fat. That's their choice. There's this friend of mine that I work with. She was talking about how she feels like she can't control her food addiction. Like she's totally dependent on fast food. And I told her, look, you're just going to have to make a decision to amend your way of life. And if you slip up, you slip up. But once the decision is made, you have to make a, a conscious, concentrated effort to not continue to eat crap. And I know it's really hard working in that sort of environment, but I told her to just use the clientele as motivation. <laughs> you see all those morbidly obese people? You don't want to be like that, do you? Okay, well, here's where it starts. <laughs> It's like, cause she's been gaining weight, like since she started working there. And I see that happen to so many people. They, they're skinny and then they, they eat our food because it's so easy and it's free, you know? But you have to make a conscious choice to not do things all, all because they're tempting. You know, like that, that temptation is always going to be there. So you have to make a choice and say, you know what? I'm not going to allow myself to be crippled by this anymore. And I'm not going to use, you know, my biological needs as a rationale for acting in a gluttonous way. I see that a lot with sex. I see that a lot with um, masturbating and stuff like that. Nobody has to do anything. Okay? So the same people that make this excuse that they have to masturbate are the same people that make this excuse that, like, they have to eat a piece of chocolate cake. Or they have to check their social media handles because they haven't checked them in 20 minutes. All right? They have to do this. They have to do that. It's that same FOMO. It's that same fear of death. Okay? They've managed to convince you that all these things are a requirement, but they're not. See all these motherfuckers wandering around a third world country? They haven't eaten in two weeks. They survive. You know? See homeless people on the street? They survive without electricity. That's what I'm saying. Like, people think they need all this stuff that they don't actually need. But they're so pampered here in America, they're so pampered in a first world country that they've convinced themselves that all this stuff is necessary, but it's really not. Hardship begets humility, and humility begets reliance on God. And that's where we need to be.